Hi, this is Carrie Bible, tour guide at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery, and this is week 15 of Hollywood Forever Tour Talk. I'm coming to you this week in sepia, basically, because I feel like it. All right, well, this week we have two mysteries for you. One was recently solved, and the other one is nearly a century old and remains one of the most famous unsolved crimes in Hollywood history. But first things first. The solved mystery involves Close Up and his doppelganger. Oh yes, Close Up has a doppelganger. I've recently spotted this creature at the cemetery. It looks very similar to Close Up. I thought I was seeing things at first, but I decided I had to investigate. Well, I managed to talk to a cat caretaker at the cemetery last weekend only to find out that this new furry feline is actually a female named Miss Leela. Leela has a shorter tail than close up. Her face is a lot more round and she lacks the chiseled panther-like features that define close up's elegance. She has a little bit more patience than close up, not a lot, but a little bit and also is not nearly as friendly or outgoing. But she's very cute, and the other day I was giving her food and treats, but Close Up didn't like it. And at first I thought she might be Close Up's girlfriend, but after seeing them together I concluded that she wasn't an adored girlfriend, rather she was more like a bothersome younger sibling. When I petted her and fed her Close Up, stood at a distance on a local monument nearby, giving us both the evil eye. Then, at one point, he even turned his back, turned his nose up in the air as if in disgust. So Close Up really doesn't like it when this new cat gets my attention. Nonetheless, I will be keeping tabs on Miss Leela and reporting back to you when I have new stories to tell. And now for our unsolved mystery. This is one of the biggest and most famous in Hollywood history. In fact, at some point in the future, I might even do an entire standalone lecture or Zoom presentation about this case simply because there is so much to tell. And that is the unsolved murder of silent film director William Desmond Taylor. Contrary to many reports, he was not British. Rather, he was born in Carlow, Ireland, and he came to America. He worked in Hollywood, first as an actor and then as a director. He directed Mary Pickford in two films. He was very well liked and very well respected by the film community, which would make his murder all the more shocking. He was found dead of a single shotgun wound on the floor of his bungalow on Alvarado, February 1st, 1922 in Los Angeles. His valet found the body and then informed Taylor's neighbors his friends, Paramount Pictures, and then the LAPD, who are probably the fourth, maybe fifth wave of people to arrive on the crime scene, leaving any crime scene evidence woefully compromised. They never caught the killer, but it didn't stop them from trying. Brought in for questioning were troubled alcoholic actress and director Mabel Norman, who was also the last person to see him alive, and troubled teenage starlet Mary Miles Minter. While neither woman was ever formally charged, Mabel's career was badly damaged in the ensuing scandal, and Minter's was all but destroyed. She worked in Hollywood for one more year and then never worked again. 98 years later and counting, this case remains one of Hollywood's greatest unsolved mysteries. It has been the topic of a History Channel documentary available on YouTube, multiple books which we will discuss, and even a film festival in Ireland celebrating Taylor's film legacy. Countless podcasts have been done about this case, and I think at the end of the day, an unsolved mystery will always tantalize much more than a solved one. Here are some of the books that have been written about this case. I will briefly talk about them and see what you think. I'd love to hear your theories, your thoughts, and your opinions. Perhaps the most famous book written about this case is called A Cast of Killers. This book is sort of a thinly veiled account of director King Vidor's 
quest to find out who killed Taylor. Some of the names and circumstances have been changed a bit, but it's actually a very good book and it's very interesting. And the theory that this book purports is that silent film actress Mary Miles Mentor's mother is the one who ultimately pulled the trigger. The reasons are many. Mary Miles Mentor was a teenage star, but hated being a movie star. She and her mother did not have a good relationship. She wanted to break away, to leave home, to get away from her family. She wanted to marry Taylor. And the popular theory that this book puts forward was that the mom is the one who did it. And that she basically, the daughter was a meal ticket. And if the daughter would have left home, thus the meal ticket would have as well and the family fortune. So the popular theory is that the mom did it, but again, that remains a topic of speculation. Read this book and let me know what you think about it. I'd love to hear your thoughts. But again, some of this is a little bit of thinly veiled fiction. A lot of it is truth. It's sort of a blend, but I think it is still a very interesting read. Next up, this is a more obscure book. And you can find it on um, perhaps eBay, used bookstores, etc. It's called A Deed of Death. This book is a bit more, I don't know that the word academic would necessarily apply, but it's more analytical. It's more um, dry, if you will. And it goes into some different interesting theories as well. One of them being that Taylor was very much against drugs. And of course, drugs were prevalent in Hollywood. Well, they're prevalent everywhere, actually. And that drug dealers killed Taylor to keep him from discouraging local actors and others to purchase drugs. So it's an interesting theory. I don't know that um, the book really proved it for me, but um, you can read it and find out for yourself if you like. This is the most recent book to come out about this case. This is by William Mann. It's called Tinseltown, Murder, Madness, and Morphine at the Dawn of Hollywood. And I think that there are some things about this book that I liked, some things that did not quite work out for me. Um, it's really complicated. And I don't want to give away the ending to this one. This is actually a pretty new book. It just came out a year or so ago. In fact, I have an autographed copy right here. And I think uh, this one you should read for yourselves. But one of the things about this book that um, I disagree with is the conclusion. I think personally this conclusion is a little too far flung for me. I don't agree with it. But what I did like about this book is that William Mann really writes in depth about the power struggle between producer Jesse Lasky and Will Hayes of the Hayes office. And I think that is very interesting. And, you know, nothing happens in a vacuum. So this case of William Desmond Taylor being murdered came right on the heels of the Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle case, which we'll talk about in another episode. So this, this case was happening as the Arbuckle trials were still going on. So basically you had yet another scandal hitting Hollywood that was threatening the livelihood of the industry. And this book definitely goes into that power struggle that was working out behind the scenes at the time. But again, I don't want to reveal too much. And I think that you should read it yourselves and come to your own conclusion. And also my friend and colleague, Mary Mallory, she blogs, she writes a lot, and she does incredible research. She has gone into a tremendous amount of newspapers. And her theory, I think, is also very solid. Her theory is that Taylor lived in an area, the MacArthur Park area of Los Angeles, which now is not a good area, but at the time it was in 1922. And a lot of show business people lived in this area that were wealthy, famous, prominent, etc. And Mary found out there was a string of home robberies going on around that time. And then after the Taylor murder, the robberies stopped. And Mary's theory is that the robber was robbing the house, of course, because again, a lot of wealthy, famous people live in this area, and Taylor was home and caught this burglar by surprise. The burglar freaked out, shot Taylor, left, 
and the robberies came to a halt. So that is that is Mary's theory. Other theories that are floating around, there's another theory that it wasn't Mary Malzventer's mother, that's such a mouthful, that rather Is, are you there? Okay. That rather it was Mary Miles' mentor herself, that she went down to Taylor's bungalow and wanted to marry him and was screaming, crying, very, very upset, demanding that he marry her. He tried to calm her down. He tried to diffuse the situation. He put his arms around her to hug her. And when she hugged him, she put her arms around him. She had the gun in her hand and the gun went off. And that's another theory. So pretty much almost everybody you talk to in the film history world will probably have a theory on this case. And a lot of uh, film historians and film history buffs are also true crime buffs. I am no exception to that. So I love reading anything I can about this case. And it's kind of a double-edged sword for me because on one hand, Taylor's only remembered by people as a murder victim, which is really a terrible way to only be remembered for. But on the other hand, I've seen several, several of his films, and they're entertaining, they're lively, they're, they're fun. But he wasn't a silent era genius like, say, Rex Ingram or Cecil B. DeMille. He wasn't a super iconic director of films like those guys were. And so sometimes I wonder if he had not been a murder victim, if he would have just kind of had to slide into obscurity. So it's hard to know. Obviously, we will never really. Know. but it's always fun to speculate and read more about it and one thing that interesting that happened to me I volunteer for Eddie Moeller's film noir festivals that happen here in Los Angeles every year and I meet some very interesting people while doing that to be sure and one year I was talking to a guy who was in law enforcement he was hanging out at the merchandise table and he told me that he knew Mary Miles mentor she lived a very long life and he said that when she was a very elderly lady, she lived in Santa Monica, California, and that she was robbed. And these criminals tied her up and beat her and robbed her house and everything. And he said he was one of the guys that was investigating the case. And that afterwards, she would call him all the time on the phone at work, and she just wanted to talk to him. And he thought it was a really sad statement that she just wanted someone to talk to because she was lonely. And there is a history of mental and emotional disturbance in Mary Mel's mentor's family. There's so much to unpack about this case. Again, I think I should do a presentation about it in the future because there's certainly, there's so much to discuss. There's so much about it. I mean, there's no, no doubt that we could go into this for hours. But if you watch this and you have your own theory that you want to put out there or discuss, let me know. But again, I think that after his friends, his neighbors, Paramount, all these people were at the crime scene, I think any evidence would be so incredibly contaminated or compromised that we're probably never really going to know the truth. But it certainly is fun to think about the what ifs, the hows, the when, wheres, and whys. So thank you for joining me for yet another episode of Hollywood Forever Tour Talk. And I'll see you next week.